Tip number one, if you're gonna be talking about John Rawls, make sure you're wearing your John Rawls shirt. And if it's dirty, make sure you're wearing your other John Rawls shirt. Hey, I'm Dr. Matt Deaton, infamous Rawls fan. I teach ethics for the University of Texas at Tyler. And when I first started teaching, I would type all of my lecture verbatim into PowerPoint slides. And then I'd stand at the back of the room with a remote and I would essentially hide from the students and I would read the slides verbatim word for word and hope that no one asked me a question that I couldn't answer. But then I started going to conferences such as the Association for Practical Professional Ethics annual meeting. Back then it was usually in Cincinnati. And I noticed that the presenters that took the time to study their subject well enough to not have to read a script, those who embedded cool examples and audience involvement were usually more effective. I was more engaged, I better understood, and the conversation afterwards was usually more fruitful. And so being the self-help nut that I am, I sought out some books on how I could improve my own speaking. And I began applying these tips from these experts to my own presentations. And I began volunteering to, to speak at conferences such as Appy. And I got a little bit better. And about the same time, I, I guess I impressed somebody because I was invited to teach my first oral concentration philosophy class, Contemporary Moral Issues. And so now, not only was I responsible to teach these good students ethical theory, not only was I responsible to teach them how to apply that theory to real world issues, I also need to teach them how to become public speakers, how to improve as public speakers. And so I invested in additional public speaking books. This is a good one. This guy really gets to the point fast. This is an excellent one. This guy studied the best TED Talks and distilled some of the, the best techniques of those TED Talkers. And this one is just for fun. This guy's a professional speaker. I, I do some professional speaking as well. And based on everything that I was learning, I wrote a little 15-page document, public speaking in a nutshell. And my students said, Matt, this is fantastic. This is better than what we get from the real public speaking classes from the communications department because they kind of overinflate or, or uh, make, make it way too theoretical, whereas you're just straight to the point. And so about that same time, based on a bet with a graduate school buddy, I did my first open mic night at a comedy club. And I wasn't perfect, but I got some books on how to do that as well. And I got better and I got good enough where the owners invited me to host the open mics. And I got good enough at that that they invited to pay me to host the real comedy shows. I would host one show Thursday evening, two shows Friday, two shows Saturday. I'd be the person that would come out and get the audience warmed up, introduce the feature act, transition into the headliner, and then close things out at the end. It was a lot of fun. Based on my time as a comedy club, club host, based on all the research that I've done and I continue to do, and based on my experience teaching ethics students how to speak publicly, I took that little 15-page document and I built it out into a full public speaking how-to of my own. And I gave it this title for search engine optimization purposes because I'll search for best laptop under $500 or best whatever, but also to hold myself accountable to make it the, the, uh, the best product that it could possibly be. But this is distilled down into my three commandments of public speaking. Those three commandments are know thy material, be thyself, and practice. For know thy material, the first one, the next time you're going to give a presentation, the first thing I want you to do is I want you to follow something that Mr. Tracy advises. I want you to do the down dump. Take out a piece of paper and write down everything that comes to mind that you would like to convey. Or open a Word document, that's what I'll usually do. All the ideas that you have for examples, all the ideas you have for audience involvement, the main points, etc. Now I want you to go back and logically organize those such that the second follows from the first, the third follows from the second, the fourth follows from the third. Now I want you to go back and I want you to add emotionally potent examples. And this is from Mr. Gallo. This is one of the things that he found that the best TED Talkers did. Remember, he uses the example of Bill Gates giving a presentation on malaria. And rather than just talking about it in the abstract, he releases some mosquitoes to, into the audience. He, he gives the example also of a presenter who's talking about, I believe it's a, a cancer perhaps that killed a certain number of people every day. But to really make the number of people hit home, the speaker used the example of how many 747 jumbo jets were crashing every hour, for example. If you just say a thousand people die every day, that's one thing. But if you say one of these jumbo jets crashes every two hours or whatever, then you imagine all those screaming victims and it makes it more, more real and more vivid.
Do the same, don't use that awful example, but do the same for your own presentations. Second commandment is be thyself. I want you to get some practice presenting so that you can discover what your authentic stage self is and then so you can polish that authentic sta say stage self. And I say your stage self because we're all different in different contexts and that's okay. That doesn't mean that we're inauthentic or that we're fake. It just means that we're a little bit different when we're with our family, when we're watching a football game, when we're in a uh, classroom with just a few students, or if we're up in front of an auditorium of people. I want you to be as authentic as you can possibly be though, because if you are, you're gonna be much more comfortable, you're gonna feel better about your presentation, and your audience is gonna respect you more. Because if you're fake, they're gonna sense that and they're gonna tune out. But if you can be authentic, if you can be your real public speaking, speaking self, they're gonna be more receptive and you're gonna be more successful in that you'll better communicate your ideas. And the last com uh, commandment is practice. On this last one, I want you to rehearse the way that you intend to deliver. For this presentation, I knew I would be talking to a lens and conveying this over the web, and so I practiced speaking into a lens. I knew I would be in this office, so I sat down and practiced in this office. I was in this chair. I wasn't walking around. I wasn't outside. I was sitting right here. Uh, a couple of years ago, I was asked to open up a, uh, a society induction ceremony in a big auditorium. And I'd been in that auditorium. It had been several years. So I went online and I Googled it. And sure enough, pictures came up of that auditorium, of the view of the auditorium from the stage. And so I was able to study those images. And then as I rehearsed, I could imagine being on that stage. And in fact, I set up some chairs in my living room and I staggered them like auditorium seating and I put my kids stuffed animals in those chairs and I pretended they were the audience members and I would look in to their eyes practicing that eye contact and when at the actual presentation they said ladies and gentlemen please join me in welcoming Dr. Matt Deaton when I walked out onto that stage it was still intimidating because this is an auditorium I don't do this every day but it was much less intimidating because I'd already rehearsed in a similar fashion. So those are the three commandments. Know that material, be thyself, and practice. And when you practice, you're going to find that you'll find improvement ideas that didn't come to mind when you were doing your down dump. My 12-year-old son just last week, for example, gave us a presentation here in our home school on different types of boats. And in that presentation, I was so impressed that he took some wrestling mats, some uh, puzzle piece wrestling mats that we have in the house for jujitsu and uh, other, other fun activities, and he formed them into a canoe, and he invited the family to come up and to get inside this canoe. And then he made some quick adjustments and transitioned that canoe into a kayak. And then he folded it all out flat and he pulled over the whiteboard that we used for instruction and such, and he used that as a sail. I was so impressed and I asked him, Justin, where did you get the idea to use this cool interaction? And he said, when I was rehearsing, he was rehearsing, just talking about this stuff and he looked around and had that idea. You'll, you'll find the same whenever you're giving your own presentations. As you're doing that backfill, I want you to think about not only those emotionally potent examples, but just cool examples in general. Just a couple of weekends ago, I was presenting virtually to some ethics bowlers in China. They asked me to talk about a few chapters from my, my ethics primer, Ethics in a Nutshell, The Philosopher's Approach to Morality in 100 Pages. And one of the concepts I was talking about was moral argument by analogy. So I asked the attendees to imagine that in the room they're right now, they hear, and they're surprised to find in the corner a baby. And they're studying this baby in amazement. Where did this baby come from? And while they are, they notice that it gets bigger. And while they're studying it, they notice that it continues to get bigger. And the baby, like a expanding Thanksgiving Day uh, parade balloon, gets bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. And pretty soon, this expanding baby is pushing up them up against the edge of the room and they're being crushed and they're being smothered and you remember you have a pocket knife and the baby doesn't seem to be malicious it's not trying to do this but it's going to kill you if you don't do something so you pull out your pocket knife and you reluctantly jab over your shoulder hoping to buy yourself some time well the baby instantly deflates and it's motionless Judith Jarvis Thompson argues that if you agree it would be okay to stab this expanding baby and essentially kill it in order to save your life, you should agree that it's okay for women to have abortions in cases when the pregnancy is threatening their life. Visual aids like that are helpful. I was giving a, a, a YouTube lecture not too long ago on something from the philosophy of sport, 
And this author was arguing that blindside tackles in football are okay, but they're a little bit unsportsman, which I agree. And so rather than just talking about it, I was able to say when the quarterback drops back and they're looking this direction, and a linebacker comes from behind and bam, hits them. That's a blindside tackle. It's able to illustrate it with a football. Think about ways you can do that yourself. Some bonus tips. Number one, think about your silent message. Think about your audience's biases and how you can play to those in a way that's, a, that's consistent with you. If I were to wear a suit, you'd be suspicious of suits, but a raw shirt, you're probably pretty cool with that. Um, number two, uh, involve your audience when you can. Think about ways to, to uh, uh, better them. If they can uh, give them ways to actually apply what you're saying, you'll be more effective. You can do that. Number three, think about ways that you can help your students grow as speakers. You can definitely lead by example. You can provide good instruction, perhaps uh, selling my uh, public speaking book, perhaps. Um, but also when you give them feedback, try to be as positive and as upbeat and as optimistic as you can possibly be. When you're listening to them speak, if you're judging them on their, their public speaking, smile and nod your head. Be approving. And if you have to give critical feedback, give them a compliment sandwich. Say, for example, Johnny, your articulation today was very good. Excellent job with your articulation. It was a little distracting when you peed your pants. But your organization was the best it's ever been. So try to, to buffer that criticism with some compliments. And last, if you get really nervous as a public speaker, know that that nervousness is going to pass. If you've, if you've studied your material, if you're being yourself and you've practiced, it's going to go away. Another thing you can do is you can uh, practice an assertiveness drill called the Urban Honey Badger, which is in the book. But you can also study martial arts. You can bypass that by just purchasing some pepper spray. And my last tip is, if you're speaking on John Rawls and both your Rawls shirts are dirty, you can also wear your comp shirt. Not exactly the same, but you know, it's close.